In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I set up a small, super efficient, really powerful, and relatively inexpensive two-stage dust collection system for my small workshop. Tom Bills, I'm really glad that you decided to check out this video, and I've got a weird confession to make. I'm really excited about dust collection, and the reason why is because I came across a study recently that kind of blew my mind, kind of shook me to my core, and also made me feel almost a sense of duty to make this video and share this information with you guys, because I want you guys to stay, to stay safe and I want you to be successful and be able to do your best work. And the study that I saw, they found that um, these professional woodworkers were losing 1% of their respiratory capacity per year and that they had shorter than average lifespans. When I read it, it just sort of, I don't know, it just flipped a switch in me and just kind of changed my approach. I mean. I, got, I started looking at it because I knew that my dust collection system in my old shop was not very good and I just wanted to do a better job in my new shop because I wanted it to be clean and I knew that it was kind of important, but I had no idea um, how dangerous wood dust can actually be and I think a lot of people don't really understand how important this is. And, it's, and the real thing is it's not just important for us, it's important for our families and anyone else who's in the building where we're working, even if it's a different part, if your workshop's in your basement, that dust can still get up into the other parts of your home and could be dangerous to your family or your pets or anybody that breathes air in the building. So, <laughs> um, and at the very least, um, you know, we wanna keep our workshops safe and we wanna live long and we wanna do our best work and it's hard to do that if we're not healthy. So um, I took all this information, like the study I was telling you about, the dangers of dust, and uh, the links and to those things so you can check them out more, as well as things about um, different types of dust collectors, hoses, blast gates, um, just an entire like really in-depth guide on dust collection over on my website, theartoflu3.com. I'll put a link below, you guys can go check that out. I think you'll find it really helpful. If you're like me, I like to watch the video and then when I'm ready to kind of get deeper and dig in, I like to go look at the whole article and kind of you know, get more details. So be sure to go check that out. And I think you'll find it really helpful. So for my little two-stage dust collector system, I settled on using the Rockler Dustrite wall mount 650 CFM dust collector. This thing's relatively inexpensive. It's got tons of power for its size. And I think it's gonna be a perfect fit with the other components that we'll use to build this little system. Then we'll talk about those in just a minute. But first, let's take a look at the assembly and mounting steps for the dust right. The first thing is to put together the wall mount bracket, which couldn't be more simple. After that, there's a little handle, which I considered not installing, but I'm actually glad I did because it helped a little bit to um, position it on the wall and it also makes a great place to hang your hose. <laughs> um, after that, a couple more screws mount the actual machine onto that wall bracket, and then we're ready to figure out where we're gonna put it. So I decided that the best place in this tiny little workshop to mount the dust collector on the wall is this corner over here. Uh, I think that potentially could be wasted space, um, and I think we can sort of redeem that space and put the dust collector over there. Um, and I think it'll be nice, be kind of out of the way, and this shop's so small that I can still reach it pretty simply uh, with my hoses and stuff. So in order to do that, we've got some requirements to make sure the wall is strong enough uh, to hold the weight of the dust collector. It's fairly heavy and it's uh, more so than heavy, it's a very awkward thing to pick up and move around. So keep that in mind if you're trying to do this by yourself. You might wanna have a friend come over and help you the day that you mount it and position it and everything. The mounting bracket is installed as per the instructions and we're ready for a test. There we go. It is pretty heavy. Try not to make too many grunting noises, but <laughs> when I pick it up, it, it's not light and it's very awkward, um, but fit in there real nice. It's cool, uh, I don't think I showed it before, but there's a couple of little tabs on either side, the left and the right here to keep it so that it lines up on that bracket and it can't slide off or 
vibrate off one side. So that's a nice little touch. So we've basically got a two-stage system. And what I mean by that is uh, a single stage system is where you just have a dust collector, it sucks the air in and filters it and kind of blows it out and that's it. It's just one stage. In this case, we've got a two stage because the first stage is this thing. It's a cyclone separator. If you've never heard of that before, it's basically just a cone shape and it spins the air inside there and like a vortex inside there, like a little mini tornado. And when that happens, the dust slams against the walls. And when it does, it slows down and drops down into a bucket. This sits on top of a bucket, which you'll see later. And this thing separates 90% of all of the dust and chips that go into it. So what that means is the air passes through this first, then it comes out the top and goes into this. And so we have stage one and stage two. Stage one takes out 90% of dust, chips, everything. Stage two is this filter here, and this is gonna clean the last 10% of the, of the chips and everything out before the air leaves it and comes back into the room. Now, for this stage, um, I went again with the dust right just because it's part of the system and it's just easy to do. But the real key here is the fact that this is a one micron filter. And, you know, we talked about earlier the dangers of wood dust. Um, we can filter this down to one micron and the beauty is that the majority of the dust comes out in stage one and that allows this very fine filter to be a lot more effective and get clogged up a lot less because it's just not dealing with as much of the, the other 90% which is coming out in here. And this is literally just a little tornado in here and um, it can't get clogged up, right? Because there's no filter medium in there. It's just using centrifugal force and all that. So I've got the dust collector back off the wall and over here on my workbench in the main part of my workshop. And um, I just thought it's gonna be a lot easier to install the next part of this system here, which is gonna be, in my case, this one micron canister filter, which is also from Rockler and part of the Dustrite system. And um, if you're not going to do this, you don't have to purchase this. This is a little bit expensive, but it's not bad. Um, you can use the included bag that, it, that the regular dust collector comes with, which is this bag, which filters down to three microns. And um, that's going to be okay for m many people's applications. In my case, I'm trying to just go the extra mile and make this as healthy as possible of a working environment for me. Um, I will say I had a three micron bag like that in my old dust collector in my old workshop, which was a much bigger, robust system. Um, and I worked there for over 20 years. So um, that worked out pretty well for me. Um, just trying to, uh, in my new workshop here, I'm trying to really up, the, up my game on everything and just be as healthy as possible going forward. So um, yeah, so that's why I'm going with this one. And plus it's kind of cool. It has some other neat features like a self-cleaning thing where you can just turn the crank and clean it, which I think is awesome. Um, if you've tried to keep any of these, these clean in the past or have experience with that, you probably can relate to. Um, it's not super hard to clean bags and clean other filters like this, but it's just, you get lazy, you know, in practical reality. So having that little crank you can turn on there is pretty neat. I'm looking forward to that a lot. So let's get started and get this thing assembled and then we'll get it back in place and give it a try. So the first step in mounting this is to just put on this little bracket and this is gonna clamp on here and it's gonna hold that canister filter in place. So, and it's pretty simple. It's just a little piece of foam tape, uh, the bracket itself and a nice little um, soft rubber gasket here, which is cool. It'll make a nice tight seal for us. So pretty simple, got some supplied screws, got the socket wrench ready to go. The first step is to apply this foam gasket material. And it's really not too many tricks to this. The only thing I would say is that um, I like to pull the backing off a little bit at a time as I apply it. It just kind of keeps things from getting messy and from getting stuck to itself and stuff like that. So that's the way I like to do it. Next, I put on the little rubber gasket, and I find that it's the easiest to put it on at this stage, because once the metal flanges are in place, it becomes a little trickier to get that thing on there. 
When you're putting in the screws to attach the flange, one really important tip that I discovered was that um, at this point, you don't wanna tighten them all the way. You wanna snug them on there, but leave them loose enough so that you can rotate that flange and rotate the whole filter after it's on. That lets you be able to line up the logo that's on the filter and just sort of get everything lined up properly. For this next part, you'll need a couple of scrap pieces to get the height correct. Uh, for me, a neck blank for a guitar and a guitar back that hasn't been carved yet worked out perfectly. I rotate, get the holes lined up, and then I start each of the screws by hand, which I found to be a little easier, followed by tightening with just the top part of the socket. And then I went ahead and snugged them up the rest of the way on the top with the socket, and then on the lower parts where the socket doesn't fit, I just used the included wrench. But I didn't over tighten any of them, which um, I think is important because the metal isn't that thick. Time for one more gasket to be applied around the bottom of the, of the canister filter. Same technique here, nothing uh, too fancy. One last tweak to get things lined up and we're ready to put it on the wall. And last, but certainly not least, I install the handle we'll use to knock the dust off the inside of the filter to clean it. Okay, so I just put the plastic bag on for the first time and I struggled with it a little, but here's what I found helps the most is I put the front edge on first and sort of held it. Now you don't wanna to push too hard, but I just kind of held it a little with my hip and then I used my two hands behind here to sort of stretch that bag a little and work its way on there. But it's, it's a really nice fit. This is the bag that came with the canister filter. And it, I just have it pulled up above. Here's my foam tape. I have it up a little higher, you know, just kind of like that. That looks pretty good to me. So now I can just grab this uh, clamp that it came with. See if we can get this on here too. One thing I noticed is that it helps to put this behind this part here. If you don't, it gets hung up on there and it's really hard to do. It feels a little too tight, but let me check it. Let's see, see how it goes. There we go. All right, now that the dust collector's installed, the next thing to do is to hook it up to our machines. Now, in my last workshop, I had a two horsepower dust collector, which is a lot more powerful than this one. And it allowed me to have like, have, uh, you know, pipes mounted to the walls with blast gates on each machine. Now, when you do a setup like that, it really, uh, having the blast gates and all that, those feet of piping really takes a lot of your suction away. Uh, from your dust collection system. So you end up with a lot less than what you start with by the time it gets to a machine. So the way to maximize your dust, the, maximize the suction and efficiency of the dust collection is to do a, the most direct, uh, shortest route from the dust collector to the machine. So what I decided to do, since this room is so small, is to just go with the regular dust right hose and dust right quick connect fitting here. And um, we're just gonna throw this on here to test this out. And then we're gonna talk about one last thing before we wrap up. But um, let's go ahead and put this on and that way we can plug it into a machine and see how it really does. Now, let's give it a try on the belt sander. That's all I have to do is plug it in. You can see I've already installed a quick connect, connect fitting, which you can also get at Rockler. It's part of the Dustrite uh, system I bought uh, one for each machine and it's pretty simple just to plug it right in. I don't think it's any more difficult than opening or closing a blast gate really. And what you gain in efficiency of your system is, is really awesome. So you don't have to have as powerful or big of a dust collector. All right, let's give this a try.
Okay, so a couple of thoughts after I just used this for the first time. Um, you might have noticed when I was sanding this uh, sp spruce, or not spruce, I'm sorry, this is uh, pine. So I was sanding this pine and I put it in like this and I was really trying to dig in on it and just get a ton of you know, dust to go down there and see what would happen. Now my old system was, remember um, I mentioned earlier, was a two horsepower dust collector. And when, even with that two horsepower dust collector, when I would sand and really dig into something and make a lot of dust at once, I could put my hand over, over like near the front of the belt. And what would happen is it, the dust collector wouldn't take all the dust and it would be sort of carrying some around and kind of spraying it out. So if I had put my hand here, I'd feel some of those dust particles you know, flying off that uh, belt when it came around the turn there and it hit my hand. And with this one, I didn't feel any at all. In fact, I didn't really even see any dust. Um, I'm kind of shocked actually, because this is a three quarter horsepower dust collector. My old one was a two horsepower dust collector, but it verifies my sort of theory that the simplicity, no, let's say the efficiency of your dust collection system is actually, I think maybe more important than the power of your dust collector. I'm not saying this one isn't powerful, but it's just so much smaller than my old one, but it's doing, I don't know, twice as good. This is not scientific, but my, my feeling is it's at least twice as good of a job of picking up the dust off of this belt right here. Uh, wow, so yeah, that's really cool. I'm super happy with it. Um, I did a little sanding on this mahogany neck too, and uh, really, really good. I didn't see any dust coming from it. I was, I was kind of wondering if it was sanding. So, cause I'm just used to having a little bit of that other dust kind of floating around up here in the, in the area. Most of the time when I'm sanding, when I was sanding with the old one, I would have a buildup of dust like all over this area and all over here all the time um, when I was working. I should have cleaned it off really well before I did this. That would have been another nice test, but I think it's scientific enough to please me and, and make me really excited about using this system. However, there's still one more piece to this puzzle that I'm gonna show you right now. Now it's time to assemble the first stage of our new system, which is the Oneida Super Dust Deputy 4 inch. And to do this, it's really simple. Just another layer of our uh, <laughs> gasket material that we've been using so much. Nothing fancy there. Install a reducer, place it on the bucket, and then just put on this, uh, this really nice collar that snaps on to attach the two and make a good seal. All right, so the next step is to get our hoses set up and everything so that we're gonna be able to connect the first stage of the cyclone stage to the dust collector. And it's gonna be as simple as hooking a hose from here into the top of that cyclone. Now, one little trick is that you take your hose clamp just very loosely, just tightening this on. I mean, it's not tight at all. It's just enough so it doesn't fall down. It makes it easier because if you put the hose clamp up here and then you are wrestling this in and the hose clamp is moving around and sometimes it falls all the way down the hose and things like that. Um, and then sometimes I forget to put the hose clamp on at all. So um, that's a nice little trick for me anyway. So you might want to try that. So I'm just going to work this in up here. There we go. Got it. Okay. So then I can just loosen up my clamp now a little more. Okay, now we've got our hose attached and we're ready to position our first stage cyclone. So I'm gonna put it, we're gonna try it here. We might move it around a little bit. I think this is gonna be a good spot. And we're just gonna get this hose. We're gonna try not to bend the hose too tightly in any direction and just bring it down and put it right in here. We're just gonna snug it up. That should be good. Now we're ready to get the next hose on and we're about to be done. Okay, that's it. So now that's in place and uh, we're ready to go. 
One last thing I forgot to mention, just in case it's helpful to anyone, um, I did test the system both with and without the Cyclone dust separator, and I couldn't tell any difference in performance when it was connected or when it was, when it was just running straight off the dust collector. And that's amazing, that's great news. Um, I was wondering myself a little bit if that would cause a drop in performance, but I didn't measure it. I don't have a device to measure that, but from what I could tell for all practical purposes, there was no drop in performance as far as suction goes, but there was an amazing increase in performance as far as keeping all the wood chips in here and putting almost nothing inside this and into this bag here. So can't say enough good things about that. Really great little system, super happy with it. Uh, I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope it inspired you, gave you some good ideas and tips and pointers, resources, and maybe even a little inspiration to get more serious about dust collection. I wanna remind you that if you wanna check it out, there is the ultimate guide to dust collection over on theartofluthery.com. Go take a look at that. If you're into guitar making, take a look at all the other resources while you're there. Sign up for the free newsletter, whatever you wanna do. There's a lot of good stuff there for luthiers. And um, if you haven't yet, Hope you'll subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit the bell. Uh, if you have any other ideas, comments, suggestions about dust collection that you found helpful, share them in the comments below. It might help some other people. I want this resource to be as helpful as possible to keep people safe, help them do their best work and enjoy woodworking. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.